Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon Lewis, founder of the Academy for Professional Painting Contractors, and joining me today is Rick Garland, Director of Corporate National Accounts with PPG. Today, Rick and I are going to talk about the causes of recent paint shortages, the prices of raw materials, and how painting contractors can adapt to meet the needs of their clients and their company. We'll also discuss when we might possibly see some kind of return to normal in the paint market. Rick, welcome to the program, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks for having me. So, Rick, uh, tell people a little bit about your coatings industry background and, and what you do at PPG before we launch into this. Well, I uh, have a pretty extensive background in uh, uh, the paint business. I've, uh, I've been in the business for over 30 years, uh, both the industrial side and the architectural consumer side. So, uh, so a pretty, pretty uh, broad background uh, in the industry. Uh, I make a corporate accounts uh, manager. Uh, so in our position, we work directly with owners of major companies, uh, both commercial, industrial, uh, and retail. Uh, so we work directly with the owners for specifications, planning, color design. Uh, so everything that would encompass their, their, uh, their paint projects. And, you know, you started out not just necessarily in the role that you're in. Give folks just a little bit of your, of your background of how you, you came up in the ranks and ended up where you are. Yeah. So uh, earlier in my career, I, um, I actually sold uh, commodities. Uh, so it was a good base for me to learn uh, forecasting and sales budgets, uh, because in that business, you had sales budgets every day. Wow. And in some cases, you didn't leave the office until you hit your budget. So, so there was a, a lot of long hours. So in that, uh, there was a position opened with uh, Glidden Paint Company at the time. And I took a sales position there. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> so uh, and I, uh, I, I've worked for several different, uh, you know, uh, divisions in the company, you know, from Glidden to ICI to Axel Nobel. Uh, and to, to uh, PPG, so. And some of those things aren't even around anymore. Like ICI and and and, and uh, Axo Nobel, like y'all just bought and merged with them, correct? Yeah. So, so Glidden, uh, uh, you know, was part of ICI. ICI uh, basically disbanded the company and sold everything to Axo Nobel. Uh, and then um, Axo Nobel PPG purchased the architectural site of Axo Nobel. Uh, Axon Nobel is still in business, uh, but they're on a limited basis with uh, powder coating, some automotive coatings, and, and uh, those type those type of products. But uh, PPG uh, uh, acquired the architectural business in North America. So okay, because I remember uh, I, I remember a lot of that yeah. going on in our own market. We had a good little case study because we had an ICI store and then we had two PPG stores in the ICI store. Right. And yeah. It was, just, it was just interesting to watch because I was in the, it, I was there when all that stuff started happening actually. Painting. Yeah. So, so, in, so in that, I had a lot of positions, you know, I mean, as you say, a sale, I was a salesperson uh, for a long time, regional manager, regional sales manager, uh, a division sales manager, a zone manager, a VP of sales over a, a, a for a fairly large district. So, so I got to know the business pretty well uh, from, from clear down to the distribution side, clear up to the, to the sales side. So that's good. That gives yeah. a lot of perspective. So big question, uh, you know, painters all over the nation are scrambling to get supplies that they yeah. need to get the jobs done. Uh, it seems worse in some areas than others that this is anecdotal, you would actually know the data, but it seems to me are more uh, rural and suburban markets that are a little bit isolated or not having the difficulty of the urban markets, but I could be wrong. Uh, what are you seeing from a national perspective and, and what are the root causes of some of these shortages? I know it's, it's a combination of things. Yeah, so uh, obviously we're all experiencing it. Uh, it's something that uh, over my years I've never, never experienced the shortage like we're seeing now. And uh, there's, you know, you look at the whole picture, there's a lot of things that have contributed to, to this. Um, it started actually last year, uh, and it started late last summer, uh, and obviously COVID related. Uh, and this, and then this manifested itself into the early spring. So companies, raw material companies, 
uh, even our own factories, there was more protocols being put into place as the months went on. Uh, this thing all started last March, but every month new protocols would come out. And by the time we hit the middle of summer, the end of summer, production levels, uh, you could only have so many people into a manufacturing facility and not just for us, but that was all the raw material suppliers as well. Mm-hmm. So, so there's actually at that point started not what we're seeing today, but it also started the process of taking longer to get material. Uh, you know, your demand was, it was still there. We could still get material, but you weren't getting as much as you, you, you would hope to get. Uh, and demand was starting to go down a little bit as well. Uh, on, on as far as the commercial side and industrial side and those types consumer side was going clear up because people were home so they were painting so mm-hmm. uh, so that actually started the process that wasn't the total cause of it but that started the process okay so to, to recap there the beginning of it is basically when you've got covid restrictions in place and you can't get enough people into various roles to just get production out the door, then everybody gets a little bit behind. And it's not just everybody's a little bit behind at one point in the chain. It's everybody's a little bit behind at every point in the chain and a little bit turns into a lot. And right. You know, what, what happened next in this, (laughs) this fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, as we went into, you know, the the, uh, late fall into winter, uh, as everybody knows, things started to seem to come back a little bit. Uh, we got into January and February with pretty high hopes that, you know, it even looked better and better. Uh, was no problem with materials. I think, uh, you know, raw materials were flowing in pretty well. And then the big Texas freeze hit. Uh, and that started the process. Uh, as you know, a lot of suppliers are in the Texas, Southern Texas market to supply a lot of these type of raw materials. Uh, with the freeze and no power, uh, these operations were pretty much shut down. Uh, and that started the process. Uh, even in warehouses that had material, uh, temperature sensitive material froze mm. uh, because there was no heat, as everybody remembers, all the people that, you know, all their homes were freezing, the pipes were bursting. And so, you know, these are the, these are the ramifications of some of these things that you, you know, you, you, you don't realize, but, but this is what started the process. Uh, and these shutdowns, as, as these shutdowns happen, it threw the whole raw material process into a tailspin. Uh, and those, those people being shut down for weeks put us months and months behind. Uh, And there's where the root cause really started to to manifest itself. And it affected all the, all the, all the paint industry, but it didn't only affect just the paint industry, uh, plastics, uh, you know, uh, were a a part of this and, um, you know, containers, uh, getting and acquiring containers become a problem. Uh, And, uh, you know, we get notices from, from uh, caulking companies that they're, discontinuing right now making certain colors uh and uh, because of raw material so it's it's bigger than just the paint industry side there's a lot of things out there um drywall compound uh the same thing there were wow. many areas of shortages of drywall compound uh and then to top it off um uh, a lot of raw materials are imported uh and what we're finding today there's containers that can't be unloaded uh, and that, that, that lends itself into just getting material. Uh, when we ship things today, we tell people it's going to take a little longer to get there because there's not enough drivers, truck drivers. So, yeah. So you've got a combination of raw, basically it, it sounds a to recap here, cause it's kind of, it's a lot of things and it's it, a yeah. lot of unintended consequences. When, right. You know, when you start meddling with business and then you have mother nature come in on top of it. Right. So number one is, you know, we just couldn't get as many people into the various supply lines as we need right. to do in different plants. Then we have the Texas freeze, which means that we've got a lot of raw materials that, that can't be produced are lost. Right. Uh, and then you have the, the general labor shortage, which not only impacts every single every single part of this process that leads to a can of paint, 
Right. Well, now you've got, okay, we finally get some paint made or we finally get some raw materials. Well, now there's not enough people to unload it or to drive it to where it needs to go. Right. If you, if you look at just containers on the both coast, there are thousands of containers that are sitting, that are just sitting, not being able to get unloaded. There are container ships sitting offshore that can't even unload because they, there's no room to put the containers. So, so there's, so there's that backup. And uh, again, not all raw materials come or made in the U.S. Obviously, there we there are raw materials that that are essential, like titanium, uh, that a lot of it's imported. So, so those those particular pieces uh, really are all in combination of what's taking place now. Now, do we get raw material? Yes, uh, but it's limited, and uh, so it's very limited is what we get. And, and obviously, for, as the company, they look at what we can produce and what we can't produce. Uh, so that's, that's a, a, a really job in itself because each week they try to plan on what they're going to make and what they're going to make the next week and the next week and the next week. Based on if we get the raw materials uh, and, uh, uh, you know, most of the raw materials companies have given us this force majeure letters. Uh, so we've received those from many of the raw material suppliers. So that, that really sums it up from their side, meaning that, that they can't even guarantee us when we're going to get raw material. Well, and so, that's the whole reason you have a uh, force majeure uh, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in contracts, because sometimes things truly do happen that are outside of your control. Your control. Company. Yes. I mean, you're not dropping the ball, but it, you know, there, there's only so much you can do. So right. I guess that means that they're also, um, I, I assume that there are certain lines of your products that are like a number one bestsellers and certain regions, right. those puppies are getting made and everything else that's kind of specialty orders probably, you, you know, just having to wait. Right. So, so the biggest volume items, uh, and, uh, you know, the company's pretty good about the regional supplies from history and what products sell and which, you know, are not the mo biggest movers. So, and, you, and you're right that, that that's how production is being scheduled right now, uh, regionally or, you know, national products. Uh, and again, those do trickle in, uh, you know, those do, do come into the warehouse. Uh, Unfortunately, like most things, when they come in, they go out pretty quickly because the orders are so far behind that, mm -hmm. that you know, these products just go. Uh, now, this also comes at a bad time when there are so many new projects. Construction just boomed out of, out of going into 2021. So now we're faced with not having supply, but a whole lot of projects that are coming, coming up. And, yep. and, you know, everybody wants to get these projects done. And there's just, you know, a major backlog of, of projects out there. Uh, and uh, so, and you asked a question before, when do you think this will be over? We don't know for sure. Uh, we, we think that in one part it looks good and then it, and it falls off a little again. So, mm. so this really goes month to month, uh, you know, as to when we can be at least somewhere back to normal. But I think indications are it's not going to be until probably October. Uh, some companies that I've heard are telling people February. Uh, so it just depends on what the product is. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be ongoing for the next few months, that's for sure. Okay. Um, so practically speaking, now that we know it's okay, this is whole lot of moving parts, a lot of things that are outside of uh, even very large companies' controls. Um, the, the supply chain has been remarkably disrupted. Um, prime, you know, a little bit of mother nature, whole lot of government. And, um, and now we're just trying to get back on the, on the ball from that. So what practical measures, if you are a painting contractor and you're working with your local uh, PPG store, you know, what are three or four things that you definitely need to do? Things that maybe your typical painting contractor isn't doing to the degree that he should that would help him a lot. Well, I think one of the major things that I've seen, and I've, and I've told all of our corporate accounts this, get your order in as soon as you can. Uh, used to be, you know, a lot, of, a lot of contractors would come in and they'd get a project and come in a week before and say, I'm starting next week and I need 500 gallons. Uh, that in itself sometimes is a challenge. Uh, 
because you know we don't stock you know as much of that product or those products that they might need. So, but we were able to order it and get it in from our from our distribution centers. Today, it's one that put your order in now. You may get it in, in three weeks, four weeks, uh, could be five weeks out. Uh, so, getting the order in early, and also the important part is that unfortunately you're going to have to talk to your customer and let them know that you know thank you very much. We love the project, but you know. There are some time constraints that we're going to be at uh, at with with actually application, and uh, unless they can find material, so so really number one is just to get the order in. Uh, so at least the store knows how to order and get those orders, uh, and and know that they need to get these orders placed. Uh, now we may not have a timeline on it when they place them, but at least they're in there. Well, so it sounds like number one, <clears throat> you might want to, if you can, talk to your paint store and say, "Hey, number one, what's being made?" Yeah, might be a good place to start. Uh, if they can answer that question, can they? They can sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is that they're not going to know uh, until they check inventory, uh, because with allocations uh, and looking at product. Uh, it's it's one that that they just won't know until it's actually made uh but there is there is no uh, and going back on that there is some forecasting that is that is in place with anticipated dates of manufacture uh doesn't necessarily mean that's written in stone it's just a planning piece that says if all goes well we get the raw material here's what's going to be made that week uh so that that's that that's how it's working right now now, we hope that gets better, you know, as, as it, we get into September. But uh, this this month has probably been the toughest month. Uh, middle of July in, and where we currently stand is probably the toughest, toughest that we've seen. Well, typically speaking, when you look at the aggregate demand of estimates across the nation, and I've had opportunity to look at some of this, typically uh, July is the peak month. That's when your phone rings the most with people saying, Hey, I want something painted. That's typically right. the, the month. Yeah. And so the thing about it is, you know, all that 2020 demand got slammed into the first and second quarter. And now it's actually kind of, you know, dropped off just a little bit from my conversations. I'm just talking to the guys about the phone ringing in general. Um, and so all that together with, you know, they're trying to do the same thing y'all are. They're trying, they've got 50% more demand with, a third to half as many yep. people and it's just a challenge yeah now one thing you know uh, i think all of us have been very good about supplying you know either residential market painters or uh small commercial projects so you know those those have, have you know there are some shortages of product but those have been coming through okay uh it's when you get into the to the mid-level commercial jobs or the big commercial jobs where it's going to take 1500 gallons of dry fall or, you know, yes. 500 gallons of block filler. So those are the, those are the ones that, that, that really get a roadblock. Uh, so, and even if you're in residential, I assume look at your production schedule and probably, I mean, one, I think adaptive method for our men uh, and women would be to take some kind of materials deposit because right now, uh, typically you didn't have to, pre-order things and then hope you could use it and right. now you're going to have to so it's almost like it, one good thing might be is hey we're, we're having to take materials deposits because we're there's such a, a limited amount of it and we can't right. be left holding any of it uh if somebody decides not to go forward with the project so you know even if you decide we, you're we're not your applicator you, you will own this material <laughs> and yeah. you take it home yeah. with you uh, yeah. And put it in your basement or whatever, but we've got it. Yeah. And, and so just go through that production schedule and start, you know, stuff that you used to order a day or two in advance, order a couple weeks in advance. Yeah. One of, and the other thing that's happened too is so, uh, like a lot of applicators and painters, uh, you know, they get used to one material. They really like that material, uh, but that material may not be there. Uh, so we may have to sell you an alternate material. And that is that's the reality and sometimes it's it's just one of the things you know you know choice number two choice number three or choice number four so it it just depends at this point is what you have you actually have in stock so yeah well and i you know typically i've 
I have found with all of our conversations with our painters that if they are upfront with people um, in, during the quoting process and they say, hey, listen, this is here are all the obstacles. We are booked out. We can't get materials. You're not, you're just you know, run down the laundry list. Are you OK right. with that? And most people are, are saying, OK, but it doesn't right. need to be it doesn't you don't need to surprise it with them after they sign the contract. You need to talk to them about it way up front. Yeah. And the other thing, too. Uh, and we get not only uh, uh, just on a paint side of it, but we get notifications from from our uh, sundry suppliers, brushes, rollers, uh, you know, all across the board. And they're giving us notices as well of back orders, products they can't produce. Uh, and they're all it's all in the same vein of, of raw materials, again, yep. with the paint materials, but also with plasticizers, some other things that go into making containers. Uh, so they're, they're giving us back orders every week, uh, where they're in the same situation. So, uh, so again, it, 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 it covers a broad range of products, you know, that are in the stores. It just, it just really does. And it, and again, exasperated by these delivery times, uh, how product ships, you know, will ship from the warehouse, uh, unless it's a big carrier, but yeah, LTO orders will go to a secondary warehouse used to sit in that secondary uh, uh, warehouse for, you know, two or three days before it's picked up and moved on or maybe a day or two. Now, sometimes it sets for a week. Uh, so it's their terminals uh, and the terminals pretty tell, tell us we just don't have enough trucks or drivers out there to move this freight. Uh, so when we ship products, particularly, you know, these shop products, they could be sitting in a secondary terminal for twice as long as they normally would. Let me I'd ask you kind of an interest. I don't know if this is if you would know or if you see this, but for example, in Tennessee, Georgia, and a few other states, uh, Alabama, I think, for example, and there are others, they've, they've gotten rid of this, um, this extended incentivizing people not to work. Uh, right. And some states are keeping this. Uh, are you seeing any differences in the markets where? these incentives are going away or those terminals performing better do you, do you even know i i haven't i can't tell uh you know in that regard i, I do know there uh i mean from some states to states there there are labor shortages though uh and uh you know whether it can be directly related to that i can't tell i mean just from the conversations i have but uh i know that uh, you know, in some parts of California, a lot of contractors that didn't do business in California are going to California to do painting projects. Uh, so, and I've seen that just from some of the corporate accounts that I, that I manage. Meaning people, there's such a shortage there that even though there's yeah. a shortage everywhere, there's not as big a shortage. So they can take some of the labor in, into California and still do business because they yeah. just can get people to do it. Yeah, there's just a shortage in so many projects too. Uh, I mean, there's so many projects in California and it's just that there's just not enough, I don't believe contractors, uh, but, but again, that's, it's, it's kind of plaguing the whole industry across the country too, though. Well, so, uh, you know, you partnered with us um, when other independent painting contractors and the painters purchasing group, and it's been great working with you. It's always difficult to, to get people to, to change a paint provider, which has been our, our, one of our biggest things. But I think now, as we see so many changes coming in the market, you, you really need to, be, uh, you need to be more thoughtful about you know, who you partner with and, and not necessarily always do it out of sheer convenience because it's not very convenient anymore. Um, can you talk a little bit ab about that program and, and what that partnership could mean for painting contractors? Well, I think one of the things we, you know, we, we try to do, particularly in this program, is have some real consistency. Uh, you know, not only just consistency with product, but with, uh, you know, uh, what the financial side of it would be, you know, what you're going to pay uh, and give you long term uh, you know, pricing in that regard. So, so, you know, at least, uh, outwards, you, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna have some stable pricing, uh, in the program that we have with you, we have some stable pricing to a certain date. Uh, you know, a lot of companies, uh, you know, I see them taking a lot of increases. Um, and, uh, not that, not that that's 
coming not going to come up it will come up later uh and you know we all have to have to look at the cost so uh but i think too also getting local local people involved with the contractors uh and you know local ppg people involved with the contractors is is important uh, just for the day-to-day -day operations uh at our level, you know, we wouldn't know what the day-to-day -day operations is in that market or, you know, what that contractor's doing, but, you know, our local people do, and if they work with them close enough, they can even help them in this shortage too, you know, uh, letting them know what, what possibility is coming up or actually telling them what's available uh, because they get notices and, you know, working closely with the, that person in your market, he may say, hey, listen, this week we've got inventory on XYZ products. So, you know, so I think that's that's important, uh, important piece. Um, and, and, you know, uh, particularly working with your group because you manage, you know, a good amount of relationships as well, so. Uh, well, if you're, if you're out there guys and you've been struggling to get paint and you're maybe, you know, I, I don't know that, in in that particular market if ppg is going to be exactly the same or a little bit better but it's a great time to explore other options for where you buy materials and to to think about uh maybe getting in a in a group where uh, there's a there's more than one little contractor um uh, who's who's trying to to have a relationship with a with a larger vendor and rick and his group have been fantastic uh, you know, every time you go to a local market, you know, every store is different. Every sales rep is a little different, uh, but we've been able to get knock on wood, everybody taken care of uh, that needs to be taken care of out in these markets. And our guys have had glowing feedback and have been very positive and supportive, but painters are stubborn. And sometimes they will not, if it's change, even if it's, if it's very positive change, change is painful. Uh, even if it's very small amount of pain, it's enough to keep a lot of people from improving their business. But we've had a had a lot of folks and we'll be uh, we'll be going going back to to people and talking to them about this when they slow down a little bit probably in September October I've learned uh, it's just it, it's hard during the summer everybody is so busy uh, so I do want to thank you for your time to come here on this ask the expert call if, if anybody out there is interested in the painters purchasing group email me brandon at paintersacademy.com brandon at paintersacademy.com as we get ready to to close this out, Rick, what words of wisdom or summary would you leave contractors with in the current environment? Um, just to recap. Well, one of, one of the things that it, it, it's almost critical is to stay very close to your customer uh, and inform them all along the way, uh, feed them information. Uh, don't let it just die for a couple of weeks, you know, and, uh, 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 let them know that, you know, you are diligently working to get material that, you know, what you're seeing and, you know, you can just pass on to them exactly what you're getting and the information you're getting. Now, sometimes it, you know, it's, it's hard to do. It's your, everybody's busy, but just giving them information and staying in contact with them, at least they have some comfort that, you know, Hey, you know, at least they're, they're keeping us in mind. And that, you know, they're feeding, they're giving us information and not just letting us hang there and saying, we don't know when we're going to get it. So, so I think that's an important part. Right now, communication is probably the best thing you can do. I agree. And that's, yeah. you know, it, it, the guys that are, often it just seems to me that the guys who, uh, and painting contractors who have middle of the road painting, but excellent communication and processes are loved more by their clients to right. do the perfect, beautiful master painter job, but everything surrounding the experience and the communication is abysmal. And, you know, you can, if you had to pick one of the two, especially in residential and commercial uh, maintenance painting and repaints, um, that communication and process and experience is honestly, in many cases, more important than the finished product. I agree. It, it, it just always plays out. Uh, even if you lose a project because of the material shortages, they'll come back to you because, uh, because of your communication and how you treat them. So. Absolutely. Yep. Well, Rick, I've enjoyed it. I appreciate you. I know you're a very busy person and you're yep. juggling a bunch of balls and it ain't the easiest time to be doing your job. Nope. So yep. thank you for taking some time to, to right. speak to a few thousand painting contractors on this. 
And uh, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Ask the Expert call with Rick Garland. I know I have. Uh, if you need me, if you have any questions about the Painters Purchasing Group or other things, you can reach us at 423-800-0520. Uh, until next time, I'm Brandon Lewis with the Painters Academy, signing off. Goodbye. All right. Cool. We'll, we'll snip the ends off that puppy and have Jason do that. Let me hit the stop record button if I can figure it out. Stop record.